we've seen already in a few practice problems that it's often key in reasoning from intermolecular forces to appreciate the relative strengths of different types of intermolecular forces. This slide summarizes the general trends in the strengths of intermolecular for forces from weakest to strongest. And just for good measure, I've thrown covalent and ionic bonds, which we would generally think of as intramolecular forces at the bottom, to indicate the, that these are far and away the strongest types of forces between atoms. So at the top of the list, we have London dispersion forces. These are the weakest forces in general because they only involve relatively small, relatively weak, instantaneous dipoles. And they exist in all compounds to varying degrees, although they are most important for nonpolar compounds. Next come what we might call plain vanilla dipole, dipole forces not involving NH, OH, or FH bonds. These dipole-dipole forces involve attractions between the opposite ends of permanent dipoles, and these are intermediate in strength between London forces and hydrogen bonding interactions. So next on the list, these hydrogen bonding interactions are stronger than simple dipole-dipole forces, but only exist between OH, NH, and FH bonds, shown here in blue, and NO or F atoms. So these can exist in mixtures of covalent compounds, that contain these groups or in pure substances that contain OH, NH, or FH. And beyond hydrogen bonding, we have covalent bonds and ionic bonds in this list, of course, and these are intramolecular forces that are much stronger than the intermolecular forces we've discussed so far. I should also add here that there's a fourth type of intermolecular force that doesn't appear on the slide that you may encounter that's relevant to mixtures of substances only and it's called a dipole-induced dipole force. In terms of strength, these tend to fall between London forces and dipole-dipole forces because they involve the interaction of a permanent dipole in a polar molecule with an induced dipole in a nonpolar molecule. So this might be something, for example, like N2 dissolved in water. N2 is a nonpolar molecule, but when a water molecule in, say, a solution of N2 in water comes along, if that water's negative side presents itself to one side of the N2 molecule, that can induce a dipole in the N2 molecule that is temporary, but that nonetheless results in an attractive interaction between the N2 molecule and the H2O molecule. These kinds of dipole-induced dipole interactions explain how nonpolar small molecules can be soluble in polar solvents, can be dissolved in polar solvents. One last point to make here is for us to keep in mind that rules are made to be broken. So these general guidelines, these general patterns in strength don't always apply. This is particularly true for relatively extreme comparisons. So say we were comparing a very long nonpolar molecule, very large, very long nonpolar molecule with a much smaller but polar molecule and asking about their relative, let's say, melting points. Well, the London forces in the very large, very long molecule may be even stronger than the dipole-dipole forces in the much smaller polar molecule. And in that case, we may observe a higher boiling point for the nonpolar molecule than the polar substance. These situations do arise, and do keep in mind that rules are made to be broken, although these general guidelines are going to serve you well in the vast majority of lecture problems and as a general rule for everyday life.